702. Travel. And it is time for our travel feature today. We're with Gabby Brondoni. Gabby, happy Friday. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Great. Thanks for you. I am great, and I know that the conversation we're having is quite an important one. We visited this conversation uh, briefly with Iga Matilska as well, and I think it is quite important. We talk about uh, sustainable travel, especially um, um, in the times we're living in where, you know, we may only be thinking about money. We also know we are quite woke and aware and want to be doing better. So what are the tips you'd like to share with us that when we are trying to travel, we can be a little bit more... um, conscious of how we're doing it? Absolutely. So one of the first um, things to be aware of is to be mindful about the destination you're choosing. There are some destinations that have um, promoted themselves and are actually doing incredible things from an eco-travel perspective and a sustainable travel perspective. So looking to different destinations that are playing a big part from that perspective, that's one option. Another big point, this is probably one of the biggest to consider, is thinking about how you're going to get there. Now, for transport is actually one of the most important considerations when it does come to sustainable travel. If you can spend a little more of your time exploring the various uh, ways of getting to the various destinations that you'd like to visit, doing a bit of research about more eco-friendly local transport once you've reached your destination, for example. Now, from, with, with us being based in South Africa, for the majority of travel, not talking about road trips or, or boating excursions, flying is one of the only ways we can actually get from point A to point B. And it's quite widely known that flying is probably the most skill intensive form of travel. Mm. But there are actually ways where you can try and make it a bit more sustainable. So one of the, one of the ways is by flying as direct as possible. So planes tend to use the most fuel during takeoff and landing. So by choosing a direct flight rather than making one or more pit stops, you're almost ensuring that your flight is a bit more energy efficient. Um, You can actually also use different um, calculators that can tell you um, which plane you're going to be using, how much that is going to be impacting the environment. The one thing about direct flights, though, is that they tend to be a bit more expensive than choosing a flight, particularly when you're traveling internationally, they are more expensive than flying um, on an airline or flying a route that sort of has multiple pit stops. But that said, you can actually look into the various airlines you are choosing, and by doing that, you can can actually be almost up to 26% difference in efficiency between the most and least sustainable airlines. So the latest aircraft models are actually already miles ahead of their predecessors, especially when it comes to fuel efficiency. And with each new generation of aircraft pretty much improving fuel efficiency by roughly 15%, that's already really helpful. So you can actually compare the least and most efficient airlines um, at atmospheric airline index. And yeah, that's a really handy way. Another way to, to, to suss out if there are more eco-friendly ways or which airlines are doing a little bit more from an eco-friendly perspective, you can search for flights on skyscanner.net. That's one of my favorite free travel resources. You can get the app or online. It's free. And it actually pops up um, when you are searching for flights. It tells you the most eco-friendly. I use that word in inverted commas, especially when you're talking about uh, flying internationally. Yes. And um, it highlights the the most eco-friendly airline or, or, or route you could take. So yeah, that's really handy to know. And, and I, I think it is handy to know. I was just thinking when you talk about the flying that um, people were so upset around. Um, I think it was Kylie Jenner who was using her jet to just do some random trip um, that she could have driven or something along those lines. And I think many of us, um, when we fly, because it is so expensive, we do so because we need to. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and and on that point, actually, um, I think it's France has actually put in almost like a legislation where they're almost banning short flights within France. So if you if there is an option for you to take a train, which is is definitely a little more of an environmentally friendly way to travel, particularly when you are in Europe, for example, you have to then use the train. They're not allowing um, into France flights. Um, because it, it is so impacting on the environment. Yeah, that's an interesting thing to note. One, another, another really uh, convenient way to travel is probably the most eco-friendly is walk or cycle. Um, and here, yeah, rent bikes, that's obviously the, the, the most eco-friendly way you can travel.
Okay, okay. Well, what are some of the other things that we can do? Um, so, so one of the other great ways um, from a travel perspective, particularly looking at maybe international travel, they, they are brands like your, your Contiki's, I'm a big fan, they, they have a big purpose to make travel matter. So wherever they go, they really make the effort to protect the environment, the wildlife, the communities um, that they, they work in. Now, what's interesting is that if you are um, on a Contiki tour with, with one of the coaches, their coaches are probably one of the greenest ways to travel across Europe, where they're equipped with Euro 6 engines, and sometimes it leaves the, the, the engine, the air leaving the engine is actually cleaner than the air that's going in. So that's also quite interesting to know if you are looking for a tour. Another, another handy tip is to also pack a little bit more mindfully. So one of the top um, sustainable travel tips is just be aware of what you're packing. If we all thought a little bit more about the type of things we are taking, it really does make a difference, especially in the small things. So packing reusable water bottles instead of plastic water bottles, uh, taking shampoo bars instead of plastic bottles, taking tote bags instead of plastic bags. These are all small things that, that can actually make a big difference in the long run. So to just be aware of it. Definitely. And I think um, the, the, the big one of supporting local communities is quite an important one because there are countries that have high, high tourism rates that speak about the negative impact on this high tourism um, on their local communities, something that one automatically thinks, well, if you've got, you know, if I'm traveling there and I'm spending money in the, com- in the country, it must be good for the local communities. That isn't always the case. And you see videos of people saying, listen, please take into consideration when you're traveling what the impact is on the local communities, the assumption that, you know, I'm spending there to the point that they start encouraging to say, come to this place because your dollar is so much money. Everything is cheap. You can even be a a digital nomad here. I don't know um, if you've heard of those conversations, Gabby. Yes, absolutely. And that's also something to, to really be aware of is that sustainable travel is also about providing greater economic empowerment to smaller communities and the places you visit. As much as sustainable travel also talks about the ways you can travel to and from the various places. And I think that that also talks to um, another sustainable travel tip in, in that getting a local guide um, is probably one of not only being one of the best ways you can actually see a destination, but it also it, it empowers and contributes directly to the people who are benefiting off of the travel from that place. Yes, yes. Gabby, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for all of those tips and obviously bringing such an important uh, topic in our direction, which is sustainable travel. And that does not just apply to going abroad or the rest of the continent, also right here at home. I'm sure you've stayed in a hotel where they'll say to you, please, if this towel is dirty, put it on the floor. But if not, reuse it because we're trying to save water. It's all those little things that count.